When people ask me, you know, what makes Ballast Point special, it starts with absolutely amazing products. We make award-winning beer, spirits, uh, and food. We make a lot of different styles of beer, numerous different styles of spirits. It just kind of comes from the home brewing roots, in which home brewers are always experimenting, trying to not find that next best thing they can share with their friends. We have the same atmosphere here. The only difference is we have the ability of packaging it and then selling it to the general public. All of uh, the products that we make aren't generated from focus groups. It's all stuff that we enjoy, and you know you can see it in every beer and every spirit we make. Every day we're inspired to either create something new or to get better and better at making sure that the recipe that we're so proud of is getting into the consumer's hands the way we want it to. As it stands right now, we operate four facilities. Our original facility, Home Brew Mart, is a retail outlet with a 20-barrel brew house in the back of it. Our Little Italy location, which is a tasting room, a kitchen, and houses our five-barrel R&D brew house. We have our Scripps Ranch facility, which has a tasting room, a distillery, a distillery tasting room, and a 50-barrel brew house. And we have our Miramar facility, which currently houses a 150-barrel brew house that can give us capacity for north of 300,000 barrels. We have a little bit over 100 distributors across the United States. You know, we're all over the country. Primarily, we were East Coast, West Coast. We're kind of filling in the middle now. We've also ended up in 10 countries outside the United States. I get excited nowadays when I get to go to some random place and get to drink our beer there. Watching people make that decision to grab a six pack off the shelf and put it in their cart and stroll away with it. And, and I'm, I'm sitting there watching that, it's pretty awesome. If they walk into a bar and there's 50 tap handles, they can always go and say, ah, oh, I'll have a Sculpin, right? They know what they're gonna get. They're gonna get a consistent product and an award-winning consistent product. We are a very awarded brewing and distilling company. I couldn't even make a rough guess at how many medals we've won over the years. We don't have a classically trained brewmaster. We have a lot of home brewers that have built this company. What they value is somebody saying, hey, what you made is really, really good. If they grab a bottle of Sculpin or a pint of pale ale, you want to make sure that they're going to be amazed with the product that they're about to taste. When the beer geeks of the world want to talk about Ballast Point, they want to know that we still make really good quality. They're definitely a feather in your cap, but it won't necessarily build a brewery. It won't, you can't rely on that 100%. You still have to go out and build the relationships and, and meet people and tell the stories. We make award-winning beer, uh, spirits, and fantastic food. That's where it starts. But it's a lot more than that. The next component, really, we have this absolutely amazing team. And not only this amazing team and great group of people, but this uh, amazing culture that we built here at Ballast Point Brewing and Spirits ever since we started back in 1992. It's easy to walk up to this building and think that this might have happened overnight or that this is some huge, well-funded company. We have worked hard to build this over a long time. It started kind of by accident. I discovered home brewing kind of inadvertently. Was visiting my uh, girlfriend's house at the time and she asked me if I wanted to try some of her dad's homebrew. I had no idea what that meant. I thought maybe he made his own tea or, or coffee or something like that. I just remember immediately being completely just enthralled with the idea that you could make your own beer at home. I knew that I was too young and inexperienced and too poor uh, to start an actual brewery. So I figured this little hobby shop might be a way for me to get started and get some business experience and, and then hopefully raise some funds to attach a brewery to it. I came uh, into Home Brew Mart, I think a few weeks after Jack opened. And uh, within, I think about 10 minutes, I was asking for a job there. The next day, Jack hired me and was the first employee at, at Home Brew Mart. I was a craft beer uh, aficionado, nerd, geek, whatever you want to call it. Uh, moved to San Diego, started home brewing. Uh, three years later, I got a job at Homebrew Mart as a clerk up in the front there. While perusing through the newspaper, I happened to see a job posting for an entry-level position for Homebrew Mart. 
I kind of got excited enough to go into this homebrew supply shop and see what it was all about. From the first couple of visits and after about the third time I brewed, I was hooked. I was in there two, three times a week, it seemed like every week. When Jack started our company, he wanted to create an opportunity for the homebrewing community to have an outlet for supplies. Uh, that didn't exist. When you go into a homebrew store, I mean, there are essentially endless possibilities. You'll have 40 to 50 hop varieties at your disposal, 30 to 40 malts at your disposal, and a wide array of yeasts. In 1996 is when we attached the brewery to the homebrew shop. We, we, when we put that small 15 barrel brew house in the back and put beers on tap for people to try as they were shopping for their homebrew supplies, it was, it was definitely, a, definitely a hit right off the bat. So we just had one style of beer that we started out with. We called it Ballast Point Special. It was kind of our prized homebrew recipe that we felt deserved to be taken up to a professional level. Fortunately, in California, you are allowed to um, self-distribute. So this was our fancy delivery vehicle. It came fully equipped with a car seat. I'd pretty much go out and sell and bring samples. I had to roll a little cooler around that had a five gallon keg in it and kind of roll up to the bar and set that on the bar and see if anyone was willing to listen to me. And they tasted the beer, they liked what they tasted. They also liked the fact that I was the one telling the story. So we got lucky a few times. Where we are now, looking back at what we've uh, accomplished, it was just a slow accumulation of you know, inspirational ideas and, and little tiny incremental successes that built it. People ask me all the time, aren't you amazed when you walk into the brewery that we have now? And I say, hell yes, I'm amazed. It's, it's, it's amazing. This is our bottling line. This actually came out of a brewery in Germany. This line can do up to 700 bottles per minute. When, we're, when it's running in its most optimal, uh, we can run this entire line with four guys and a forklift driver. The time I've been here, the company has grown from a little 15 barrel brew house with just a fermenter and a bright tank. And uh, you know, we slowly added capacity constantly. It seemed like we always have a new tank either on order or arriving. Uh, and that's been the case for you know, 15 years at least. When I started, the issue was how do we get enough production to meet demand? Uh, we first had scripts that we were producing over 100,000 barrels at a 23,000 square feet. I still remember the day I was at Scripps Ranch and we had just undergone a, uh, what we thought at that time was a big capacity uh, expansion. We got four 200 barrel tanks and I was standing outside saying to myself, what am I going to do with all this beer? The next day, Saturday, we won best small brewery in the world at the World Beer Cup and poof, we had no additional capacity anymore. It just disappeared. We added 200 barrel fermenters basically as fast as we could have them produced and we still couldn't keep up until the point where we finally got into this place and now we're finally in a position to get people the beer they want when they need it. For the first time we've gotten to a point now here at Miramar that we can actually produce enough to let the sales team go and we've gone out to distributors and told them look you know we think we can meet demand go ahead and place orders uh, and it's led to the kind of growth that we're seeing here especially recently. As we look at the financials, one of the things that we've been able to consistently do quarter over quarter is grow the revenues. From a growth rate perspective, we've seen that growth accelerate more uh, since about Q4 of last year, uh, which coincides with uh, as we really started to ramp up the Miramar Brewery. As we look at our financial metrics, the key ones that we're focusing on are taxable barrels sold, net revenue, uh, gross profit margin, and even a margin. So we've actually been able to expand our margins while growing the business at the same time. And that's what creates all of the opportunity for our employees and for the company in general. The brew house at our new facility 
is one of the things I'm most proud of. The fact that we successfully moved this beautiful copper brewery over from Germany. When people come in and, and see something like that, and even though it's 50 plus years old, it's got this beautiful look to it that not a whole lot of breweries have. All of our stuff throughout the brewery, there's probably a story behind it. One of my jobs that I really enjoy is traveling around the world looking for equipment to bring into our, our breweries and distilleries. And uh, if it has a little bit of history behind it, um, it, it might be worth the little extra effort that we have to take to install it. At the same time we were getting larger with our, our new production facility here at Miramar, we were kind of getting smaller and opening the R&D facility at Little Italy where we can brew a different beer almost every day. Uh, so we have a five barrel brew house, 10 five barrel fermenters, and a few finishing tanks. Having that uh, homebrew system, R&D system, down at uh, Little Italy, I think is just uh, an, an extension of what we do here at Ballast Point. And, uh, it's always fun to look at all the different styles and the 220 unique recipes that we put out in two years there and, and to see how people's faces light up when they come into that R&D facility and they get to try a new beer every week they come in. We've always had that as part of our culture. We're just making new beers that we think will taste great. That's really what we consider our roots. We want to make cool, unique beers that we enjoy drinking, and we hope that our customers do too. That is what the company's foundation is built on, and I don't think it's smart or healthy to get away from the fundamentals of, of what makes you solid in the first place. So we still have that homebrew shop. It's still going well. We're introducing more and more people to the hobby. We see it as a process and a passion that has taken this full 20 years to actualize. One of my favorite toasts is uh, good people drink good beer. It's been around for a long time, but I always like to see great people work at breweries. One of the best jobs I've ever had in my life. Working here is pretty much a dream come true. This is what I wanted to do since I was 19. As soon as I started working, I felt like I had, you know, 160 new best friends. Right now, we're up to about 500 employees, so now I feel like I have 500 best friends. It's like a big community. It's hard working. Uh, it's with a smile on your face. It's wanting to share our story with people. Whenever you go around town, everyone knows who you are, and they love the beer, and they know you're about the beer. When you have people you know, your family and friends say, you tell them what you do and they're just blown away and they stand back and say, you have the dream job. And you know, I kind of think I do. To walk around the, the brewery and see genuine smiles on everybody's face is, I think, a rarity in, in companies as they get larger. I used to bounce around jobs quite a bit and I wanted to feel somewhere where I was needed and wanted and Ballast Point definitely makes you feel like a family. Everybody's got a great positive attitude. We're moving forward. You know, it's the American dream. I mean, you can't ask for much more than that. I have people where I have to tell them to stop working. You know, I say, you know, how many days have you worked now? They'll say, oh, I've worked 22 straight. I'm going for 30. I'll tell you that at the end of an eight hour day or 10 hour day or how long that may be, our, all of our employees are working their tail off day in and day out. And rather than look at that clock and be eager to get out of the building, most every employee sticks around for an hour has their shift pint, hangs out with their cronies, they talk about work with a big smile on their face. I know we're doing it well and we're winning when our employees are eager to stay at work after busting their hump for eight hours. You gotta go to the tasting room and have a few beers after work. Yeah, celebrate the day. We make a lot of good beers, but uh, I'm a big fan of the Grunion. Dorado's probably my favorite beer. It's a it's a high gravity beer, it's got some great great hop notes, and uh, it's one of my favorites by far. By far. Uh, I'd say Black Marlin. It's acrid, roasty, reminds me of my early days uh, when I started. The brewing process is really involved and really interesting, and at every point pretty much there's something scientific that we can be monitoring to improve quality and consistency. Uh, we do a lot with yeast handling, making sure our yeast is really happy and healthy. We've added uh, genetic capabilities so we can start to look for actually the DNA of beer spoiling bacteria and wild yeast that we don't want in our beer. 
with the goal of improving quality and consistency. Bells Point has a really great culture of quality. So everybody from the packaging manager to the people in the tasting room, quality is always kind of number one. We just kind of let our brewers run wild and make what they're inspired to make and see if people agree with us. If, if they agree with us, we make more. A few beers have come out of the R&D program that have made it to a packaged product. Calm Before the Storm, that's our coffee cream ale with vanilla. Commodore, which is an American stout. And we're kind of ever evolving. We just know what we like to drink and when we find these gems in the R&D program, uh, we run with them. The Sculpin came from a collaboration of homebrew recipes. Uh, we had two employees, both were proficient in homebrewing and winning medals. Looking at their recipes, they were both very similar. So I just kind of took ingredients that were similar in both recipes, added in a few of the ingredients that I liked, and it was just a little batch. It was just a one-off for these guys. Um, no real aspirations for the beer, the brand, but after that first batch, it just clawed into people. It, I mean, talk about a fish hook going into the cheek. We innovate like crazy, but we don't innovate for the sake of innovating. It's, it's in the DNA of this company because of the home brewing roots. So we wouldn't have things like Sculpin or the Spirits Company if we didn't sit back and keep innovating. Our entire spirits line, um, we've got over 13 products. We launched with a gin, we've got our white rum, our barrel aged rum, a whole line of vodkas. Uh, I think we follow the more the craft brewer mentality where we kind of, we, we like a bunch of different styles, so let's make it in the spirits realm too. Folks uh, asked us why we got into spirits, and you had a lot of beer people who were like, oh my gosh, can't believe you guys are into spirits, that's ridiculous, and I told everybody, I said, hey listen, at Ballast Point, we're cross drinkers, right? You put a beer in front of me, we'll drink it. You put a cocktail, chances are I'll drink it. We think there's a lot of folks out there like us like that. We kind of stumbled upon some craft cocktails that are canned, right, and, and pre-mixed, uh, ready to drink products. People are loving the Bloody Mary, 10% ABV, it's got some heat to it, it's got some spice. Made for a Sunday going to a tailgate, for real. I, I think of the process of brewing and, and spirit making as a alchemy. A brewer is making water turn into beer and distiller is making that beer turn into distilled spirit. It just seemed like the logical next step. And we also wanted to be the first in San Diego to do it. And uh, we're the first distillery in San Diego since Prohibition. It was literally, we, we built a still from spare parts. And uh, out of that still, we, we won a gold medal for the first whiskey that came out of it. We look to expand the distillery quite a bit. And uh, we should be cranking up from uh, just a few barrels of whiskey a month to about eight a day, hopefully. We're about in the, those first years like we were 20 years ago with the brewery. And if you can imagine what we could be like 20 years from now. Probably in the near future, it's gonna be a real significant portion of our overall business. Our marketing strategy is definitely not traditional. Uh, we focus a lot on authenticity, telling our story, and word of mouth. Satisfied customers are our best sales force. Uh, they go out and tell people about us and spread the word and encourage people to try our products. The reason why I come to Dallas Point is for the Sculpin. I mean, like, to me it's like one of the best IPAs I've tried. Didn't Sculpin like kind of invent IPAs basically? Sculpin's like the original IPA. I always love to try out the new beers and um, yeah, see what else is on tap. Yeah, the R&D beers are killing it today, by the way. The blood orange one that's at the scurvy snacks, off the charts. The company's customer service philosophy is, it's one of our values, treat others as you want to be treated. It's not rocket science, we're, we're serving people beer, we're serving them food, we want them to have a good time. From the second they walk in the door, encountering the hostess or you know, a cashier up front, just developing a personal relationship with each customer and keeping that customer coming back in and in and in and it's, it become a part of the family.
Uh, we have a lot of regulars. Um, everybody thinks it's a great place to come. We have people that come every single day and super loyal. My name is Danny. I am here five times a week. I started here when this was a tiny brewery and uh, when they didn't mass produce Sculpin, couldn't get it and now pretty much it's all I drink. It's my home away from home. Everybody from a hostess to wait staff to a bartender has a smile on their face and they go out of their way to literally say, hey, try this beer. Talk about how it's made. Talk about the story. People walk out of this place loving the brand. Our tasting bars really solidify that for us. Just, you know, a few short years ago, people really didn't think of beer pairing with fine cuisine. We, we felt like there was a place for that, and if we were gonna do food, we were gonna do it with very talented chefs and sort of upgrade the, the, the pub experience. I think what sets Ballast Point apart, first and foremost, is quality. We're constantly testing, we're constantly perfecting. Some things stay on the menu indefinitely because they're favorites and we change it seasonally. In the fall, winter, we cook heavier. In the spring, summer, we cook lighter using vinaigrettes and broth, so. And we're trying to make the food just as interesting as the beer and ever-changing. We keep inventing new beers, new flavor profiles, peppers, fruits, coffee, and same with the food. We're starting to see the effects of our reputation and our word of mouth building. Especially as we've launched new states recently, our reputation has definitely preceded us in a lot of cases. Bell's Point has been in San Diego since 1996, and at this point is selling more beer than any other craft brewery in San Diego. Today, uh, we're in over 30 states. I've seen us transform from a company that sold the vast majority of its beer in San Diego to a company that's selling a, you know, more broadly across the country. We have a fairly large presence on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Instead of focusing on promotions and advertising and discounts like you'll see in large breweries, we'll post an image of the first time we bottle it, or we'll post Paul Elder, our artist, working on the artwork for a new product. And then once it's out, it's, you know, a couple of Facebook posts and an Instagram post, and that normally is enough to build momentum around a new brand. The sales team is modeled uniquely in that we kind of came up with the idea of saying, hey, let's just start telling stories. Let's tell the story of Ballast Point over and over and over again until people start to tell us the story back to us. And it kind of clicked. The Bronx Ale House about five years ago, Jack and I were there at an event and I wasn't wearing any Ballast Point gear. And I asked somebody what was going on and they said, oh, it's a Ballast Point event. I'm like, well, who's that? And they go, oh, it's this brewery from San Diego that started by this guy who went to UCLA. The story started being retold back to me. So today, I've got about 60 salespeople across the country. I tell them, I said, do not let me catch you selling anything. I want you telling stories. Tell stories about successes in other areas. Tell stories about Jack. Tell stories about our brewers. Tell stories about Yusuf, our head brewer and distiller, traveling the world. Make us sound interesting, and people will want to talk about Ballast Point. And that is what's happened. As far as what the future holds for Ballast Point, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Cheers. 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 We're going to stay true to that mentality of allowing our talented folks to keep making what inspires them. Cheers. Cheers. And our customers will, will tell us if we're doing things right. In the last three years we've grown 80, 90 percent a year. We want to continue to grow so we have opportunities to go do something else. That's really kind of the bottom line. Growth creates opportunities to hopefully get it to produce 900,000 barrels a year someday. Cheers. Nostrovia. Cheers. Cheers. At our core, we're just a bunch of beer lovers, and what we really like to do is get together, drink beer, and figure out the next fun thing to do. Cheers!